Hey, what's happening, guys? Carl Hutchinson here, your host of Digital Marketing Rockstars, and this is episode five. And apologies if you've been waiting for a few weeks for another episode. Um, I've been really busy. Life's got in the way a little bit, and I've had a few things to sort out. So again, apologies if you've been waiting for this, and I'll try not to leave it so long next time. But I've got a bit of a treat for you um, to make up for it, and I've been speaking to a guy called Kesh. Kesh is someone that I met probably about three months ago now in London at uh, an affiliate gathering and he immediately blown me away when I met this guy because one, he was so genuine and two, he was so willing to share the kind of strategies that, that he was employing uh, with Facebook advertising, specifically as an affiliate marketer and that's something you don't really you don't really get a lot of affiliates uh, making a good success of of Facebook and the ones that do don't really want to talk about it and this guy didn't have a didn't have a real problem sharing some strategies with me and discussing some ideas and because of that I invited him to join the elitepromoter.com forum and um, just to kind of you know just give a few little nuggets and and knowledge bombs uh, where he can when people are asking for help and he's blown everyone else's mind not not just my mind but everybody else's just you know got so much value from from cash being around and uh that was my primary reason for having him on this podcast as well so cash thanks for joining me and are you ready to do this i am indeed so cash uh, as i said he's a full-time affiliate marketer specializing in social media but he's got a team integritas talent which offers social media marketing services for product owners as well as service owners so cash do you mind telling us how you got involved with affiliate marketing and what you did up till that point um so affiliate marketing i actually started out when i was 13 or 14 something like that i don't really remember now um i started with um, adult um then i tried uh, you know um online uh, sort of assets so i tried to develop some assets that were online um specifically in in um youtube streaming okay so we did um that, that did really well um, I was fairly organic in terms of my traffic up until the last four years. Um, so all of my uh, traffic that I used to get beforehand was organic up until the last four years. So that's all, that's all SEO, is it then, Cash? Um, SEO, uh, I, had, I had huge success with the answers. So Yahoo Answers, yeah. um, um, Crawler, and uh, those type of platforms. Um, answers did ex- exceptionally well um, up until they started clamping down on that. Um, I think Answers was a beautiful platform. I, I think there is still some money in Answers now, um, but personally, I just I just don't have the time and energy to devote myself to that type of um, promotion strategy. But yeah, I, then then um then I did SEO for a couple of years. Um, I was one of the first in the industry to come up with 301 redirects. So we were offering expired domains um, as 301 redirects. Um, that was hugely successful for me. But unfortunately, those stopped working, so I had to cut that off. Um, was you redirecting directly uh, to money sites, or was you setting up uh, private blog networks with that? How did, how did that look? So 301, how the 301 redirect service worked was we were redirecting directly to the money site. So wherever the client money site was, depending on, the caveat is they sometimes gave us their tier, tier one um, uh, pages. So like their uh, web 2.0s or their, um, private, their own private blog networks. So it was very client based. It was dependent on what the client gave us. We did do money, money pages. Why it stopped working wasn't, to do with any of the tiers or anything like that it was more so how the the, um link juice was being passed on um i'm guessing it still works to a certain extent now it probably works towards the pbns more than anything else um i think the problem was was that a lot of the clients i was getting were saying we want it directly to the money money page only the only a select few went to the web 2.0s or the web pbns and um i tried to restructure a little bit but to be honest, I, I really, really didn't enjoy SEO because I didn't have control over Google. I know, Carl, it, work, it, it works wonders for you. Um, I just, it's for me personally, I don't enjoy it, but that shouldn't put others off. SEO is, it has the biggest traffic out there. Uh, and it's probably going to be the cheapest for you if you're willing to put the work in. 
Um, yeah, the interesting thing is, you know, uh, a couple of days ago I was trying to record a video uh, about Black Hat versus White Hat, and I've, I've still not got the video finished. But <laughs> the thing I love about Google is anybody that's mm. that's running on there is trying to bend the rules in their favour. They're trying to gain the algorithm and. Um, myself included over the years you know I, I would be considered as a black hat marketer um, because I've employed any tactic I can to, to kind of rank and um, I think that's still what attracts me to this day you know the fact that the algorithm is just it's so gameable there's always a loophole and I get I do honestly get a kick out of, it, of exploiting that um, to you know to rank no no it's 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 really fun and um as as you made so clearly um i think what people need to understand if they're getting into seo right now um and they're starting out i I mean i I, i'm also part of um outreach digital which is a um sort of a digital charity in london and they saw it's one of the biggest in europe and we give free talks throughout london and um what I've, whenever I go to these sort of uh, events and um, someone's giving a talk on SEO and it makes me laugh because they they talk about um, backlinks and they talk about external ranking type strategies yep. and they these these people are hundred percent convinced they're white hats. Um, what people need to remember is there is uh, Google's terms and conditions are actually quite clear. Any sort of artificial link building is completely against the terms and conditions. It. So, yeah. from the get go, if you're starting out in SEO, you need to accept that you are gaming the system, as you rightly said. You are gaming the system. You are you are sort of art- artificially building it, and Google is completely against that. Um, right. And it's the it, game. I, it's the game we play, like you say. I mean, yeah, at the yeah. end of the day, you you know you're going to get a slap on the wrist. I mean, the back of my hand cache, it's it's bright red, mate. I've had that many slaps on the wrist from Google. <laughs> But it's it's all about risk versus reward, and exactly. I think we're going to get onto this a little bit later when we talk about what, what you kind of do. But um, it's all about risk versus reward, and as long as you're not scamming someone, and um, you know you're you're not um, yeah you're not scamming basically, but you're you're mm. bending the rules as far as possible, then th- there's nothing really wrong with that. And exactly, y- you know, it's uh, Google's Google's uh, terms of conditions are not legally binding you know they're, they're contract they're contractually created by themselves yeah um the worst case scenario that can happen uh, just to give some co- you know confidence to the new affiliates that are listening the worst case scenario that's going to happen is google will turn around and say look we're going to de-rank your website yeah. um you need to sort your shit out <laughs> um it's it's that's that's basic that's essentially it. They, they can't there's no there's no way of them going uh, saying you know you've done something wrong we're going to uh, take this this and this it's it's it's, it's not in, first of all it's not in the best interest second of all it'll be too expensive that's and it. third of all they all they, they themselves are not in that position to um sort of comment on stuff like that so I think I think if you are getting into affiliate marketing SEO is definitely a great traffic source don't don't take my um, what I'm trying to, my conclusion is don't take what I'm doing right now as gospel because I think SEO is a great, great traffic source. I just, I, I just got pr- frankly quite bored of it. And yeah. that's why I moved out. I can understand that. And to be honest, it's, it's a traffic source, especially nowadays, that's, that's really overlooked by affiliates, um, mm. which is good for people that are still making money there. But yeah, it's, mm. it's I think um, I've said it before, you know, it's not really a, a cool, trendy traffic source so affiliates are always looking um you know for for better ones and obviously paid traffic i mean this is something that i moved into myself because if you can if you can um work out the conversion aspect um then you're going to make you potentially you're going to be able to make more money but again i would apply the same thing about um seo is that you're going to have to play on the upper limits of the rules because everybody's swimming in the same tank when you go to a paid traffic source let's take native for example mm. everybody everybody's swimming in the same tank and there's there's a lot of competition there mm. and to find a competitive edge is difficult because you've only got your landing page your angle and your offer so to mm. get any kind of real competitive edge other than sourcing a better offer than everybody else or sourcing a better landing page than everyone else it's very hard to find a competitive edge there and when you do find one it doesn't last very long And Mm -hmm. this is where people start to look at bending the rules and think, well, everybody's playing in this in this same constrained tank where these rules are dictating what you can do. The only way to get a real massive competitive edge is not play by those rules. 
and and so many affiliates you know that we're talking specifically about black hat now but so many affiliates just decide that they don't want to be constrained by those rules yeah i mean i i would 100% agree and i think i think another uh, another another thing that i would add is um, as i was mentioning a lot of people that are in agency um even in agencies you know big uh, seo agencies um across london for example even they um are convinced what they do is you know perfectly compliance but you know when i questioned them and asked them asked them basic questions about what they understand about google's terms and conditions um they they very struggle to answer you know i've had i've been down this road i've asked them some simple terms of conditions about how what they understand about how a backlink works and how that's artificially created and the 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 question went completely above and board with them so what i'm trying to say is that I would 100% always recommend these days learn it yourself do it yourself have control over it and if it does if you do get deranked at least you learn something from it and you know and that's that's ultimately what this game is about affiliate marketing it's about constant learning i mean you know i i my specialty now is facebook ads and i uh, ig ads i would still maintain to this day i was saying to Carl when, when we met up um, i would still maintain even though that is my expertise now i am still learning every single hour every <laughs> single day from from the platform yeah. um just this week i've learned something brand new you know uh, one of our pixels got uh, tainted with the data and um and that's that's you know insane because it took me three days and took me it drove me crazy figuring out why this uh, um, pixels become tainted and it was something so benign something so stupid and that you know you learn you learn from your own mistakes definitely um, definitely so and don't use an agency do it yourself work it out yourself because you will have the control and the same thing with with paid traffic so many people they try and find a facebook expert that you know that will do everything for them and that's yeah. just ridiculous because even if you hit a good you know they, they manage you know you pay them loads of money and they manage to get you a good campaign you've got no idea what's really happening there and if they put up their prices or they take on a different client and start messing you about you've got you've got nothing so yeah knowledge definitely is it is in you know invest in that knowledge and i mean i know at the moment cash that you've been running a workshop on elite promoter and it's been hugely successful so many people have taken you up on that because you know what you're talking about you know and, and you're you're saying to people you know let me show you so you can do it you know rather than use an agency yeah i mean i i would say personally i'm how i operate and i, I don't know i wouldn't recommend this is just my personal experience i usually how i operate is um i'll have a traffic source that i work 100 percent towards um so for example right now in the last 18 months i've been 100 percent dedicated to facebook and ig ads and i mean you asked me a question earlier on um i'll go back to that you asked me about how social media um, how I got into social media and why I'm so focused on social media. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a reason why I'm focused on it. Um, first of all, I really enjoy social media. It's really fun. Um, I get to do different content every day. It's not the same boring stuff. Um, I, I, I learn so much from it. I learn so much from the feedback I get. So um, when you create a social media post, you've got engagement from via the comments. You've got engagement on your page, for example. You've got engagement via likes and shares. And then you can track what the shares are doing and how the shares are reacting. And this gives you sort of <clears throat> an overall look on how your, how your campaign is doing. And I love that. I love understanding how people are you know, operating. I come from a finance background. My, my um, degree was finance. But um, I really, really enjoy understanding the psychology behind how people are going to purchase my uh, offer for example um that's why i really like social media and the other the other reason is because there's much more organic um opportunities so let's say i create an ad um today and i'm spending 30 bucks on it yeah um chances are that's going to reach maybe i'm maybe going to get let's say off the top of my head something like 300 to 3000 clicks something like that right okay. um that's that's from the paid reach but then those guys might be sharing it yeah and then even if i get 20 percent extra on top of that that's brilliant 
because yep. those twenty percent could share it to other people. That's it. So I, 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 that's why I like social media it's, so yeah, much. It's got a viral nature built in there, and I mean the good thing is you're getting results straight away from that as well, Cash. Because you mm. know, going back to SEO, and I can, I can totally understand why you got you got bored with that because it, you know it takes a while to get that kind of feedback, and you can launch an ad today. And you can start seeing exactly how you know what effect that's having with people. And like you said, you know, you love the data side of things and, and getting that feedback instantly. I can totally understand yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, as as you were saying, um, there are obvious caveats to it. If you're going to get into social media, um, I would say don't go down the road of hiring somebody to do it for you. Yeah. Because. <laughs> I'm going to make it really clear. Um, th- four years back, um, I used to, well, actually six years back, um, six years back, I used to own this uh, website and I gave it to manage somebody else. Um, he was basically my staff member. And um, I said to him, look, you've got to manage this. You've got to do this on a daily operations. And the problem I found was that he was on, he was doing it sort of half-heartedly. He wasn't putting his 100% in. It's not his baby. It's not his asset. Yeah. He has no invested interest in it. And it's the same goes for agencies. You know, If you go down the route of purchasing somebody that's going to um, do Facebook ads for you and you're going to pay him a certain amount of money, your value to him is maximum of whatever, 1000 bucks or 2000 bucks or whatever. That's that's your monthly value to him. He, he doesn't understand that. For you, this asset is worth maybe a million pounds yeah. you know so it's always best to do it yourself learn it yourself understand how it works and understand that you're going to have to constantly change it's not something that you, you you know for example with me i work 16 hours a day and um uh, it's because a campaign never lasts people think they have this mentality that if you've got a working campaign it's going to last you six months seven months eight months <laughs> passive income <laughs> passive income you're just walking about and making loads and loads of money and uh, it just exactly. doesn't happen you like know, that does it you know, i see all these youtube videos that people putting up of their uh, affiliating with these sort of type of uh, courses yeah. and i'm just thinking to myself you know <laughs> i wish i could get a campaign yeah. that lasts me a year you know <laughs> it's true and, affiliate marketers i've said it before they are some of the hardest hardest working people you'll you'll yeah. ever meet and um you know the, the so many people think you just sort of you know you don't work and you just set these campaigns up like you're saying you, you just leave them and it couldn't be further from the truth you know and I, <laughs> running paid traffic is manic absolutely manic and um, it is. you can't take your eye off it for, for a minute um, I, that, that's it at the end of the day you cannot you cannot be in that position where you think i'm gonna uh, you know i'm making 100 percent ROI on this now i'm gonna just scale it up it's, uh, it's see scaling on fa- on um, Facebook, for example, is an art form, yeah. and it's an art form that changes so so dramatically every every single week. Um, it's it's something that you have to master, and it's something that you have to um, sort of tailor towards your own needs. So every campaign that I do, every vertical that I work with, I scale differently. I might some some campaigns. I it is as simple as just put the budget up some other campaigns i have to be very careful because i know that that particular audience is very very expensive already and if i scale it even further if i scale it the price is going to go up five six x and i might not be able to maintain that so these are sort of questions that you have to ask yourself when you're getting into paid traffic or social media specifically can you afford it and what do i do in the future if the price goes up and these are and Ultimately, the question always comes down to what is your goal? Are you looking at short-term goals or are you looking at long-term goals? I mean, personally, I always try and look at a campaign in the long term. I never think, um, I think this is another mistake affiliate marketers make. They think, I've got paid traffic source. I'm going to make money today. That's not not necessarily the case. You can see results immediately. You can gather data immediately. And that's so much better than SEO. But at the same time, you will, you will not be profitable. 99% of the time, you will not be profitable the first day. You might not even be profitable the first week. I was going to say, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the average, what you hear, you know, for, for any traffic sources, there's there's a big learning curve. And you so many people try and copy people into profits as well. And it just I've, I've mentioned this on a few videos in the past, but it doesn't work like that. And it, and it can, you know, it can take you 
you might go, uh, you know, minus, uh, you know, a few thousand, five thousand dollars before you actually find something that, that's profitable. And um, a lot of it is just testing, and you need the budget for that. And and as you say, to hit a campaign straight into profit, that's uh, that's unicorn territory. It really is. It is. Um, um, so just some uh, tips if you if you're getting into Facebook ads, for example, I would say to get a solid campaign up and running, you probably want to spend at least three or four grand. Um, that's 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 a conservative estimate, I would say. Um, if you're getting into IG, um, Instagram is really really a, a valuable tip. If you want, if you're getting into paid traffic, Instagram is really really cheap. Um, it's much more it's much more um, viral, I would say, because you get a lot more engagements. Um, the downside to Instagram would be um, there's not many CTAs, so there's not much um, in terms of. Uh, find out more or, or um, having extra call to actions on your on your post um, you can't you can't manage the comments you have to go into ad manage to manage the comments you can't manage them externally um, so these are the type of problems that you're going to face with Instagram but it is much cheaper and I would really recommend if you want to try a paid traffic Instagram is probably is, is really really good option um, we do a lot of Instagram for certain verticals um, health specifically does really well um, if you if you if you're clever enough health can do very well on Instagram because the problem with Facebook is that everybody's trying to do health everybody's trying to do health, yeah. health everywhere right? but with Instagram where I'm paying 20 cents a click for on um, Facebook, for example, I'm only going to pay four or five cents per click for on Instagram, and that that huge difference makes makes a ripple effect on your overall campaign hour right. Um, um, so it's. I was, I was going to say, is it a completely different strategy? Then can you can you take something that works on Facebook and take it to Instagram, or is it a completely different <coughs> different strategy? Um, that's a good question. Um, I would say, if you want to take from Facebook to Instagram, you can do. But then your days are going to be a little bit different. You can't. It's very difficult to do it, the same conversion campaign, for example, from Facebook to Instagram. So I I usually stick to simple CTAs on um, on uh, on um, Instagram. So I usually stick to website clicks, just uh, basic website clicks. It's very very difficult to do conversion campaigns on Instagram. I. I essentially what, what I usually do is work out whether this audience is converting, whether my funnel is working. I usually do that via Facebook. Then I sort of translate that onto Instagram. Then I, I then I sort of see a return on Instagram as well. That's great. Um, I usually don't work backwards. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a really good tip. And I've I've heard you talk about this quite a few times on the forum that you you um, you prefer um, engagement campaigns over over con- conversion campaigns. You get a you yeah. get a cheaper a cheaper rate. Is that right? Um, yes, there are obvious caveats to that. Certain verticals you have to do uh, conversion campaigns. Um, your first step, if you're working, if you're starting out as an affiliate marketing and you're trying to do uh, social media, um, specifically Facebook, for example, I would start with co- uh, conversion campaigns because you need to gather your data. Okay. See, with Facebook, it's very, very um, let's say you target. Um, we were doing a political campaign uh, a couple of months back. It was for games, so it was a political game. Um, and what we worked out very quickly was it was in the UK. Um, if, you, if just just for some context for people that are in the UK uh, don't aren't in the UK, um, Conservative Party is our right wing party, and um, Labour Party is our left wing party. And it was sort of a game a mission mash between the two. It was a, a game between the two of them. And what we worked out was that. If you target the conser- people who uh, conservative party right wing, for example, in the UK, chances are it's you're not actually going to get people. That, you're not going to get the people that are interested in right wing politics. What is going to happen is that it's people that have engaged in posts related to right wing politics. Okay. And this was something that um, I figured out quite quickly. Um, it's quite common across all interests when you select an interest that. All that means is that someone's engaged or liked or um, commented on a post related to do that to that interest. It doesn't necessarily mean if I like if if I'm interested in weight if I'm interested in weight loss, for example. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean weight loss interest will be the best option. Okay. Um, sometimes it mean sometimes it means you have to choose bananas or apples or some other obtuse interest. Um, so. 
doing a conversion campaign is usually the best option. Figure out your data, figure out what's working for your funnel, and then switch to engagement. But yes, engagement is usually your end goal. There's two reasons behind that. Once you've got your lookalike audiences, um, you'll get cheaper clicks. You're, it's more organic because Facebook how it, it optimizes engagement campaigns. It will send people that are more likely to engage on the post. It doesn't send people that are more likely to engage with the um, uh, the website clicks. It's more likely to send people that engage with the uh, post itself. So if your post is working fine and your angle is working fine, they'll click through anyway. But what will happen is that they'll like it and they'll share it and you'll get a bigger affinity rating and therefore you'll get more organics. So my CPC is actually dropping by, by using the engagement campaigns. Gotcha. So yes, at the end, um, engagement campaigns are usually a better option. Yeah, I've got to say, I mean, these insights, they only come about once <laughs> you've spent the time and you've focused on a particular traffic source and you've mastered it. You know, it's, it's all about mastery. And... Um, you know, I've, I've realized that you've been doing this for a while. How long have you actually been running Facebook now, Cash? Um, so, so as main traffic source has been, um, this month has been, it's our 19th month. And okay. um, before that, I did uh, Facebook for a year uh, with SEO. Um, but now I'm, I'm solely de- dedicated to the Facebook. And as I said, the reason why is because Facebook is, is a beast in itself. Um, it takes up a lot of my time. And I just don't feel comfortable trying to do any other traffic sources because I just don't have the time to do it. Um, and do, do you have any VAs yeah. that help you with this? Or um, so yeah, I've got I've got fifteen uh, stuff on and off. Um, I'm looking for more partners, so I'm interested in more partners that can help sort of help me out with media buying and such. Um, one thing I would I would say to people again. Um, you're not, you're never going to make it on your own in affiliate marketing any any traffic source that you pick you're never going to make it your own partnerships are very very important um one one problem that i face i'm only 24 um so one problem that i face is that when i hire more experienced people um they don't respect me they say <laughs> if i say to them if i say to them do it this way they will do the exact opposite yeah. it's because it's solely because of my age they don't doubt my knowledge it's that they doubt my age and yeah. they, don't, they, they doubt my experience. Um, I don't. I'm quite a private guy, so I don't. I don't really tell them that. You know, I've been in this for ten years. Trust me. <laughs> um, um, but uh, I think partners are really important because you might. So, for example, for me, I'm not a good coder. I cannot code. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. I, I'm. I'm the worst coder on this planet. If 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 someone sends me a page to like edit, I'll be like, no, no, not happening. Just give it to one of my staff. Um, so, but what I'm really good at is sort of working out the strategic uh, uh, plans behind how the funnel should work and how how to get the audiences. I'm very good at understanding what people want. Um, so that's that's my um, expertise. But then I might need somebody that can do amazing landing pages have like boxes on the bottom controlling how the audience look at your landing page so for example what's working really well with landing pages at the moment is saying um x and x have viewed this x and x has just purchased um it's very common in shopify now people are saying x and x has purchased there's x amount left um sort of putting pressure on the customer really really helps conversion um i wouldn't know how to do that on a landing page i'll be honest i wouldn't know how to do that so i have people that are able to do landing pages and very very uh, clever with them um so i would really recommend if you if you want to get into if you're serious about affiliate marketing consider partnerships consider people that are going to be able to help you and consider what expertise you have personally you might be um technical guy, so landing page might be your expertise but you might not be an ad copy guy um, That's it. I studied English lit at uh, A levels, so for me, uh, writing is very, very simple. Um, but it might not be the case for you, and that that's fine. But you need to find people that can help you do that. Yeah, definitely find a, a complementary skill set is is uh, is the key. And I mean, I do this. You know, I've, I've partnered with somebody myself, and uh, this guy is um, incredible at systems, um, absolutely awesome at it. And that is just something that isn't my kind of forte. You know, this guy's like a a god with spreadsheets and, and things like this and um i let him do all that and the copy side of things i do 
I do. So we've got a real complementary skill set. And like you say, finding a JV where somebody can help you out with that. Maybe it's with a developer. Maybe it's not even an affiliate, you know. Um, but that, that will really help you to succeed. And I'm, I don't know many people that's ever made it on their own. Maybe with the SEO side of things, I know a couple that's kind of done it on their own and they've made their own little blogs and things like that and got to a reasonable level. But mm-hmm. to take it to you know to the extreme kind of levels where you you know where you're making very decent profits a year, you definitely need some kind of team in place, and that, that's just a common theme that I, that I see all the time. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the other problem people forget is that they read read about these success stories of one or how this one guy made it and made million pounds. The problem is the problem with that is this. First of all, they're in the rare zero point zero 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 one percent. Um, and they got lucky. Yeah. I've, I've never personally had luck on my side. I've always <laughs> been quite realistic. Yeah. Um, so, uh, second of all, a lot of people lose uh, having good partnerships in place will sort of have contingencies for you. For example, let's say you get busy with something and you might be able to handle everything, but you need help. So having a partnership in place means that you can sort of um, expand your workload to somebody else. And more importantly, um, as you said, rightly said, um scaling is also is scale when you want to scale and when you want to become more successful there's just not possible for you to do it on your own Definitely i think there was I, I read a book um a, a couple of years back and it was it's about economics and um it was for my university it was for my university anyway um it, what he, she talked about was really really interesting she said um an average person will only have a value of around thirty or forty thousand dollars a month. Okay. So one person can only maximum potential they have is thirty or forty thousand dollars a month, um, and I think I think that's a realistic figure. If you want to go beyond that, if you want to start earning in the millions or, um, or hundreds of thousands, I think you need to start expanding your workflow. Start start pushing work towards people who are more ex- experienced in that sector and start p- branching out and start making more partnerships especially i think that's especially true in facebook ads for example um i know i know if i didn't have my team backing me i would be really struggling i mean we have at any given point in time because how i operate um i will have something like 50 or 60 campaigns going at any given point in time because i usually do smaller budgets yep and um well that would be impossible to run yourself i can't do it yeah i just yeah i'd go crazy so so uh, you know talking about that then because you know this is one big problem that a lot of affiliates have they 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 realize that especially on paid traffic that they're having to wear a lot of hats some things they might not be so skilled in and they realize that they're the bottleneck that's stopping them from from scale you know from scale um, so they, they look at hiring people and like we said a developer is a, a good hire but what about actually giving giving someone more control of, of the campaigns you know is that is that a big worry for, for you when you've taken staff on how do you stop them from sort of stealing that or have you ever had a problem where somebody stole a campaign um, so in March uh, actually yes, <laughs> good that you bring that um, um, so just just a quick uh, heads up in March um, three of my top media buyers um, they sort of ran away and um, they gave they stole one of my campaigns I think that's always going to be a risk yeah. unless you get them to sign some sort of contract um, which you're sort of putting yourself in a really da- dangerous position if you get them to sign a contract because you're sort of binding yourself towards them as well and if they're shit you're going to have problems <laughs> um, so um, I, I, I would I would say you've got to really understand the person I'm what I'm doing at the moment is sort of building relationships. I'm trying to understand how people are. I'm trying to. That's why I'm running my workshops. And my ultimate goal is not the not to charge. I'm trying to build to sort of build partnerships yeah. and understand the relationships of how people operate. I think what's what's important more than anything else is are they dedicated to you? Are they dedicated to your um, ideas and notions? If they're not. Um, it's probably not going to work out. So I have had that problem. Um, how I combat it is sort of try and, I know this is going to sound really bad, um, but you should try and befriend them. You need to you need to be a friend to your um, uh, partners or employees. You can't just treat them like um, whipping whipping people, you know. You, you've, you've, 
you've got to be friends with them and understand what they want you just can't be like oh do this do that do this do that um so yeah if you're going to try and build partnerships and employees or always try and understand what they want um don't just run into hiring them um i was really desperate so i had to hire as quickly as possible to expand um and I, I regret that now because they stole a really fairly successful campaign. And, I, I, you know, when I look at the spy tools, I can see them running. So it's kind of it's no. kind of frustrating yeah. um, because it's the exact angle, the same uh, same funnel, same landing page. Um, so it's quite frustrating, really. And I can't do uh, I, I mean, I could go down a legal route, but it's it's too much of a hassle, too much time consuming. I don't it's. I don't really want to get that much attached to uh, one campaign, so I'm not going to go down that route. Um, others would. But to avoid that next time, what I'm going to do now is make sure I understand how this person operates and how much time can they dedicate, what values, uh, what's the ultimate end goal. That's it. Do they have an end goal? Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of how you're recruiting right now. You know, you're using elite promoter to uh, sniff out potential opportunity you know potential jvs with people that really want to take it to the next level and they're they're committed and dedicated like you say and i know already you know we've kind of i've I've put you in touch with somebody and you're working together now and i'm hoping the workshop you're running is gonna you know find a few more people to help you do that and and both of you take things to the to the next level together and you know, talking about the workshops, you know, you're not trying to profit from it directly. You're, you're, you know, I say this a lot. It's a bit of a joke on the forum, but you're not a guru, Todd. <laughs> so I, I, just some context for everybody that's listening. Um, I, I, I sort of started saying guru, Todd, and I'm, I'm trying to get it trending. If you can share, yeah. if, if you take anything out of this, please try and share hashtag guru, Todd. Yeah. It will help. It's <laughs> it brilliant. Will help really help, it will really help us sort of spread the words. Um, I think e, uh, Elite Promoter Forum is doing something really, really valuable. I think one thing that Carl's really um, nailed is you offer for advice that is actionable yeah. i think that's what everybody else lacks when you go to other forums and communities you're generally going to get generic advice um i don't think it's actionable actionable advice is something like let's say somebody uh, so somebody asked me a question on facebook the uh, on the facebook section the other day and said um, something about how to um how to manage your accounts and i gave him a specific tool on how to manage it I didn't say generic advice. I didn't say, okay, you can go on Google and search it, or this is this is this is how you can do it. I said this tool, this is how you do it. You know, you have to give actionable advice. Otherwise, people aren't going to take action. There. That's simple as that. I agree. You know, people, you need actionable advice to do something. And I think that's what Elite Promoter Forum has done really well. And that's what my workshop essentially is about. I'm giving actionable. We're going to be working on an actual campaign. Um, I'm going to try and get it profitable. Hopefully, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm aiming to get it profitable by the end of it. Um, but I t- I'll that's... tell you something, Kesh. Sorry to interrupt you, but I've never seen that done. I've never ever seen anybody that's that's um, going to take a take a campaign, take a group of people, and walk them through a campaign, set up a campaign together, and attempt to get that into profit. Where everybody is going to learn exactly, you know, what it takes. And I've I've never seen that done. And um, you know, you're you're letting me uh, tag along on this uh, on this adventure, and I'm just as excited as everybody else that, that's doing it, just to see you know exactly how you do things. Yeah, I mean th- that's it. I, I, as as you rightly made clear, I'm, I do charge for the workshops, but it's 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 not. It, uh, I'll be honest, it's not something that I, I'm making money off. I'm charging what's fair for my time. Um, I'd, I personally, I'd be I'd prefer to work in my business. Um, my business partner Vishal, he's quite panicked that I'm going to be taking all this time off. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, looking over that, my aim. If I'm offering these workshops, these people that have asked me to run these workshops, they've asked me to help them. And my aim from the workshops was, how do I actually give them something actionable, something that they're actually going to take away from this and be like, okay, Kesh has taught me this. I'm going to action on this today. Um, and that's what I've tried to do. I know I, I'm, I'm fairly sure nobody in this industry has done that before. Definitely not. They've never tried to say, we're going to set up a campaign from square one. Um, um, and that's some. I, I think that's. I'm hoping that's something that 
people will learn from. I just want to add, uh, you know, um, I just want to add, if you are going to get into Facebook, um, do you consider other options for your information? Um, always try, always try and learn yourself. And, and the best way you're going to learn is by trial and error. Yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have, uh, I didn't go to some guru course. Um, I, to be honest, when I started, when I first did Facebook, which was a few years back, um, there was, there's not many gurus around on Facebook and the ones that were around, they were charging so much for just generic information. Um, I feel like if you want to learn, the best way to learn is do it yourself. Um, learn from people that are already in that atmosphere and solely dedicated to that uh, atmosphere. You know, um, there's so many people in the Facebook community that are just dedicated to Facebook um, and they, you can learn from them. You can speak to them and understand what they're doing and what you're not doing. Um, so always try and learn yourself with Facebook and don't think if a campaign's working, it'll be working tomorrow. I, uh, this is one, one problem that I always see. Um, whenever, I, whenever somebody approaches me on Skype and asks me for help and say, this work campaign has been working for a week. Why is it not working now? Uh, you know, there's so many, there's so much information missing from that. That I can't help you with. Yeah, <laughs> you know, this is a, yeah. you missed out the entire entire um, data that I, I I need to understand why it's not working. Sometimes a campaign spikes. You know, yeah. with Facebook, for example, let's say your reach is only two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand people. Um, chances are only 10 or 20 or 30 percent of those people are ever going to convert you're, you're never going to get them to convert with the same funnel you're never going to get 100 percent of those people to convert with the same funnel you have to do a new funnel you have to do a new campaign it's never going to be the case that you can get all 100 percent to convert with the same campaign exactly it's just not possible i've never seen that done um no matter what anybody says no matter what facebook gads you see people saying oh, i've done this i've done that i don't think that's personally i don't think that's true if someone wants to prove that prove me wrong go ahead write me an email uh, <laughs> or send me a message on the Elite promote promote forum but i've never personally seen that done i've never seen a hundred percent of your target audience converting on on a campaign it's not gonna and sometimes a campaign just dies so don't get don't get disheartened it's just the way of life it's just facebook it's just it's just affiliate marketing in general you have to accept that it's true and i think a lot of people as well they get emotionally tied to campaigns and they try and revive oh, God, it and the <laughs> you know i mean i've been guilty of it myself and and you know the the best advice is to have you know always be testing new campaigns because then you can the ones that are struggling or not really working or dying out you can just trash them if you don't do that and you just stick on one campaign every day and wondering and scratching your head why it's not working as it as it as it was you're just wasting time you could be finding another campaign that works you know exactly. 10 times better exactly exactly that's why my strategy is have fifth we have 50 60 campaigns going at any given point in time and um None of them are all, all, almost all of them are always spending less than 50 bucks a day, yeah. maximum 50 bucks a day. Because I know if one campaign doesn't do so well, I can just get rid of it and just go. I, I have no emotional attachment to any of my campaigns. That's the key. Never. That's the key, mate. I've, I never have, I never will. I never, ha I, I never have an attachment to any of my campaigns. I think that's, if you, if you take away one advice, always make sure you, you remember that. Don't have an emotional, any traffic source, Google, um, Native, or Facebook, or Pops, or whatever, don't have an emotional attachment to that campaign. You've got to keep moving, you just can't give up. If one works, I'm 100% sure, sure you will find another one. Don't just waste your money on the same one. Awesome advice. And that's even the same with SEO, like you say. If you're just going to sit there on one website, constantly just worrying about that one website, that is just not a good strategy. I mean, the, the, my money over the years has come through churn and burn, and I've made lots and lots of websites. And I realize that the risk is a lot of those get hit. But as long as I'm always looking and i'm always testing and i'm always sorting new sites out then i will always make money and the exact same thing with with pay traffic as you said keep making new campaigns because some are going to die for whatever reason sometimes they just die and there's no reason behind it but they just die don't worry about it don't over analyze it just move on so Kesh, exactly. i think we've been talking for 50 minutes now I'm, yeah. i can hear my yeah, wife sort of running about upstairs and going frantic because we've, we've booked a table for a, a dinner because it's on, we're on a sunday today so uh, people are going to be really annoyed because they they're probably getting a lot of value from this and especially with the facebook stuff but um i would say to you um we might do another podcast at some stage cash that'd be really cool to to talk more about um the darker side of facebook maybe perhaps possibly um but um 
definitely thanks for for coming on and being such a great guest and again for being such a great member on elite promoter and um i'm gonna have to cut it cut it short at that mate what's the best way yeah. to get in contact with you outside of elite promoter um skype will probably be your best option um i re- seldom reply to my emails um skype will probably be the best option um is carl you have my skype so you can post in in the description yeah okay i'll do that well, definitely yeah okay cool thanks a lot Kesh. thanks so much mate and uh, i right. hope you enjoy the rest of the day and again thanks for being such an awesome guest thanks carl for having me and you too have a good day so guys that wraps up another podcast and thanks for joining me i know there's a few audio hiccups in there so i apologize about that and i know that i didn't really get around to all of the questions that i wanted to ask cash but i'm sure you'll get some some good value from that so thanks a lot guys and i'll see you on episode six of digital marketing rockstars